Now I'm going to give a sketch of the proof of, you can see, uh, y is t, t distributed. Which is actually a rather complicated thing to achieve, actually. Just to remind ourselves, where is the first time we see uh, sort of the classical t statistic? Then it comes as a random average minus the true underlying mu. Often when we do a test statistics, we will see a mu zero here. But when we formulate it theoretically, we could say it like this. And divided by the sample standard deviation over root n. This is the standard one sample t statistic expressed as a random variable that we use for doing hypothesis testing, one sample hypothesis testing. The thing is, we claim that this is a t distributed uh, st statistic, but how the heck can we prove this? And in a way, actually, in this course, I never showed you the density of the t, actually. Now, if you think about it, what is the t actually here? Um, well, the starting point to prove is to make the classical assumption that the individual n's, xn's, xi's, should say, is a random normal sample and also independent. Independent. With this assumption, we could actually prove uh, from a probability calculus point of view that we achieve the so-called t distribution. Let's look at the t statistic. Let me rephrase it a little bit to see the sort of the components that we maybe can handle based on uh, previous uh, videos that I have given to you. Um, let's decompose it like this. I would like to say I would like to take in the true variance in the expression to say that in the, in the, in the numerator, I have the x bar minus mu over sigma over root n. So this is, I would include the sigma. Then I have to sort of make sure that it uh, cancels out again, the sigma. So, and I put it like this, I say, I have, I'll write it like this, I say n minus one times s squared. Then I put in the sigma squared to make sure that it cancels out with the sigma from the numerator. And then I also have to put actually n minus one since I multiplied n minus one and divided by n minus one. I multiplied by sigma and I divided by sigma. That's basically what I did in this expression here. Having put it like this, I could Simplify, just give some new names and say, I have a standard normal up here. I have the square root of, please recognize, please recognize I use u for n minus 1 s squared over sigma squared. Please recognize that previously we have convinced ourselves and proven that this is a chi-square with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. So if I write like this, I actually could put it like this, u over n minus 1. So actually, actually, what I should be able to find the distribution of is to have a, I should emphasize that by set I mean a standard normal. If I can find the distribution, distribution, of a standard normal divided by the square root of u over nu, where u has a chi-square with new degrees of freedom. If I can solve this, I have solved my case. Then I have uh, solved it. But look at that there are different nonlinearities going on here. Basically, two, two rules we need to use here. We need to rule, use the quotient rule, quotient rule, since I have z divided by something else, and I need to use nonlinear transformation, nonlinear transformation rule, since I have the square root in play. So these two rules 
from a previous um, uh, from a, a previous video on nonlinear transformations, we need to be able to make this to finish this proof. And by the way, uh, the other results came from uh, videos on sums of random variables that I've also given to you. So again, I'm not going to go into all the detailed computation, but let's just do it a little bit. So if we start out with the rule of, and I, I use a y now, y equals square root of u over nu, where u is a chi-square nu. So I'm going to use this um, general transformation rule for for a one-to-one -one nonlinear function. So you could say, basically, the function which is in play is the square root u over nu, like that, which means that the inverse function of y, if I say y equal to this one and solves, which we, in our rule, the, the rule that we are used for this, we give the inverse function the name w of y, will then become y squared times nu. So I, the square root becomes the square, and dividing by nu becomes that I multiply by nu. That's the inverse function. For to apply the general transformation rule, I would then need the derivative of the inverse function. What is the derivative? That would then be 2 nu y. Now I can then apply to find the density function of this one, I could use the general transformation rule for nonlinear transformation and say, I need the absolute value of the derivative of the inverse function times the density of u. It would be here then, applied or um, evaluated in the inverse function here. This then equals, this is where I'm going to jump the details now. We would then have to find the density function for the chi-square one de uh, density, plug that in, and see if we can get something nice out of this. Well, whether it's nice, I don't know, but here I at least I give you the mathematical result, which is not having a name, but is, is having a mathematical expression new to the power of new half, the gamma function applied to nu half, 2 to the power of nu minus 2 half times y to the power of nu minus 1 and the exp nu minus 1 and the exponential, I mean, I'm, I'm reading off since I, I don't know this by heart, uh, nu y squared half. So actually, this could be found by this general rule. Now, we go for the quotient rule, given to you also in a previous presentation. The quotient rule would then go and say, the actual t-statistic, as I've said here, the actual t-statistic, in fact, is the quotient of set a standard normal and this y thing that I've just found the distribution of. So to say that is the distribution function of set over y, we evaluate it in t, say. The quotient rule would then take the absolute value of x, the density function of the standard normal, evaluate it in x, t. And I mean, this is the quotient rule. I don't write it up here. It comes from a previous presentation. Uh, and then the density of the y evaluated in x, dx. And this density, tuk, 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 now we can uh, sort of plug in the density of y evaluated in x here. We could plug that in and continue these computations, and we could plug in the standard normal density also. And this is where I skip all the details. A lot of math here to be able to finish this off. If you do this, 
you will achieve a distribution looking like this, the gamma of nu plus 1 half square root pi nu gamma of nu half 1 plus t squared over nu, all of this to the exponent of nu plus 1 half. So here is the density function of the t distribution with nu degrees of freedom, actually. This is how it looks. This is the one which is tabulated uh, in the book and uh, is in R. Actually, I haven't uh, shown it to you previously, but here it is. So, by using the quotient rule and the nonlinear transformation rule, combined with handling sums of uh, random variables from before and nonlinear transformations, we could altogether achieve that finally we know the distribution, even though it looks pretty nasty, the density. Here is the density of the T distribution, and it can be evaluated, it can be used. And uh, so this is actually using a lot of probability calculus to achieve an important statistical result that we know what is the sampling distribution of such a T statistic. And so this is important. So this really shows how probability calculus is really important in uh, getting to the right sampling distributions, even though we don't need to know all this to apply the sampling distributions. But for the uh, mathematically interested uh, s people, it's nice to know that uh, we can actually deal with this uh, underneath all this. So, thank you. <laughs>